around me, put his arms around me, then he led me to the shelter, now I'm one of his own, and oh, the joy of knowing with hearts aglowing, someday I'm going to my home, my home in glory, and walk the streets that's paved with gold. Amen. You're looking forward to our home. Amen. Amen. Beyond this. Amen. Brother Edward, would you come tonight and just open the service in prayer. Amen. Certainly appreciate the presence of the Lord this morning. The word of the Lord we heard. Amen. It's just wonderful. Amen. We appreciate Brother Matt and his ministry. Amen. If you have a need in your life, in your heart, amen, a loved one maybe who needs the Lord, man, just raise a hand to the Lord. We've all got needs in our lives. Amen. Brother Edward. Shall we pray? Lord God, we thank you for this evening. More also, we thank you for this morning, for your visitation and your word. Thank you for changing our hearts. Thank you for turning us back to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making our hearts in tune with your will, Lord. Lord, we pray once more, Lord Jesus, for your visitation in our lives this evening. Lord, may you complete the work that you have started this morning, Lord Father. I pray, Lord Jesus, for a special anointing for this evening service, Lord yes. Father. Lord, we pray that every yoke be broken completely, Lord Jesus. Yes. We don't want to go back, Lord Father, with something or doubts in our hearts, Lord. As you have dissolved every doubt this morning, Lord Jesus, may we go back rejoicing. Yes. We pray, Lord Jesus, that the atmosphere will be charged with your presence, yes. Lord Father. Yes. May we worship you in truth and in spirit, yes. Lord Jesus. Yes. May our hearts yes. be glad in Lord Jesus. We pray that at the end of it all, Jesus, will go back home blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's sing, I'm a new creation. Thank you, G. Hallelujah, he redeemed me. I've been born again to win. beginning and the end. Behold, I live forevermore. Behold, I live. Behold, I live. Behold, 
live forevermore. Behold, I live. Behold, I live. Behold, I live forevermore. Amen. You can be seated tonight. I believe Sister Shelley has a song for us in a minute. I'm going to try to sing this. Um, Canaan's land is just in sight. 1205. It says E flat. If you guys know this song, help me sing it. <clears throat> Moses led God's children. Forty years he led them through the heat and through the night though they said let's turn back moses said keep on going canaan's land is just inside there will be no sorrow there Oh, 
more today than I did yesterday. Mountains are higher, rivers are wider. I need you more today. Say amen to that, can't we? Amen. We need him more. Amen. Could you turn to your only believe songbook number 632? We'll sing until you know. Let's give C. If you could own all the world. And it's money Build castles tall Enough to reach The sky above If you could know Everything There was to know About life's games Yet you know nothing until you've known God and His love. Until you know the loving hand that reaches down to a fallen man and lifts him up from out of sin where he has trod. Until you know just how it feels to know that God is really real, then you know nothing until you've known the love of God. If in your lifetime you could meet everybody and you could call every name from here to yon but if you've not come face to face with Jesus and his saving grace then you've known nothing until you've known the love of God. Could we stand tonight? Until you know the loving hand 
that reaches down to fallen man and lifts him up from out of sin where he has trod until you know just how it feels to know that God is really real then you know nothing until you've known the love of God the love of God how rich and pure how invite brother David tonight the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell it goes beyond the How rich. 
rich and pure, how measureless and strong it shall forevermore endure, the saints and Aren't you thankful for the love of God this evening? Amen. Amen. I, I've always enjoyed the imagery of the last verse of that song. Just uh, if you're to take the oceans as vast as they are, and if that were ink, and every stalk, I mean, we live in Indiana. How many corn stalks are there around right now? And you go out to Iowa and Kansas, and that's just the U.S. Every stalk, a quill, that you would still run out of ink even if it was the entire oceans that that you, you the limit is not the love of god the limit is you and i here this evening amen that that the love of god is without measure this evening amen and and he has taken that love that's without measure and he has projected it down to you and i in this last day and we're a blessed people because of it amen Amen. Let's turn in our Bibles to Joel, the second chapter. Amen. I just wanted to say I sure appreciated service this morning. Brother Matt, I, I think that's my, my new favorite message of yours. So it was just, that was just wonderful. Certainly enjoyed the, just the, the presence of the Lord and just the atmosphere. And I, I wanted to give a thank you to the church as well. I, I know I'm not very good at compliments and my wife's telling me I never give enough of them. And um, but uh, I, I did notice this morning that everybody really worked together to, to protect the move of the Spirit this morning. And so even as service was dismissed, you didn't congregate in the vestibule. You kept the kids from, from running up and down and screaming out here. That this, this sanctuary, for whatever reason, the sound seems to travel in, travel in quite a bit. And, and you know, but... But the move of God is why we gather together. I mean, I enjoy fellowship with everyone here, but the move of God is why we gather together. And so that's what we want to protect. That's what has first place. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, that, I, I just appreciate everybody working together and being willing, recognizing that. And uh, I, I think that speaks well for you all. So thank you. That uh, I, I sure appreciate that. Amen. Amen. Reading here in Joel chapter 2, let's start with verse 21. It says, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the fine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former and the latter rain, in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed." And it shall come to pass afterward, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Let's also turn to 1 Kings chapter 18, if we would. First Kings chapter 18, there's two separate scriptures in this, in this chapter. We'll start with verse 1. 
1 Kings 18 and verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And let's drop down to verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Amen. I'd like to speak this evening on the day of rain. The day of rain. Let's just go to him in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, Lord, how we love you, Lord God. Lord Jesus, we just, Lord, we just can't get enough of you, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for service this morning, Lord God. Lord, the word you spoke, Lord Jesus, just the atmosphere that was hereafter, Lord God. Lord, how we love you and praise you, Lord God. But Lord, we... As I said, Lord, we just can't get enough, Lord God. Lord, may you come once again here this evening, Lord God. Father, may you pour your spirit out upon us here tonight, Lord God. Lord, fill us full, Lord God. Not just full, but overflowing here, Lord God. Lord, that's exactly what your scripture just promised, Lord. That's the prophecy for our day, Lord God, that we would be overflowing, Lord God. Lord, let it be manifested here in our lives here tonight, Lord God. We just humble ourselves before you, Lord God. Lord, we just commit ourselves, we commit the service, we commit all things now into your hands, Lord God. Father, may you reign supreme amongst us tonight, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You can be seated here this evening. Amen. The day of rain that, that you know, they're they're in Joel, Joel, that that, uh, Brother Branham references that scripture quite a bit, and, and, uh, uh, he, he touches on that scripture quite a bit, just the, 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 the former and the latter rain. And, and, and I, I don't know about you, but I, I've often, often, well, what exactly was the former rain again? And what exactly was the latter rain again? And, and you know, was, was that Azusa Street? Was that, the, uh, was that Brother Branham's ministry? Was that the, the healing revivals? Of, uh, is it now? What, what is all of this stuff? And, and, I, and hopefully you all don't have this problem, but I, I just tend to overthink things a lot of times. Make it way more complicated than what it needs to be. That, that most of the time, if we just relax and step back and just let God be God, that, that it would become evident in our lives exactly what the Scripture means. Because I believe that God isn't just looking for a God to... Uh, he's not just looking for, for a church or, or a group of people. That, that, you know, I don't think he's just looking for a period of time that he can come down and manifest himself in, although that is part of it, and the church ages and whatnot certainly bear out the move of God. But, but in addition to being in the overall church, in addition to being in the overall bride body of Christ, and God coming down and manifesting the word, he wants to come down individually into your life. He wants to come down individually into my life and manifest these very words that that if you don't catch that revelation you're going to find yourself saying well that scripture's for brother Matt or that scripture's for brother Josh but but when you recognize that this bible was written that God was telling you individually that that this was a, a love letter from God to you individually that he wanted to bless you he wanted to pour out his spirit on you that that he wants his spirit to come down and live through you individually that I thank God for what he does through brother Matt I thank God for what he does through brother Steve or brother Hunter but more than that I want to see God manifesting Himself in my own life. That it's got to be an individual affair, an individual walk. But you're only ever going to be able to live with how God is manifesting Himself in the day and hour that you're living in. So that's why it's so important that we recognize the day and hour that we're living in. Because we don't want to just manifest any word, but we want to manifest the word for our day. This is where the denominations have always gotten themselves in trouble. It's not that they've got no word. It's not that they've got a complete lack of word. 
but they're looking back to the word that was for a different day and God has moved on. And if, they're tr- if you keep looking backwards and trying to manifest the word for a different day, you're going to find that there's no power and there's no life in the life that you live. But that's not the life that God wants you to live. God wants you to live abundantly. He, he wants you to live with an overflowing reality. That, not that you go through life with a scarcity mindset. Well, I, I don't know if God's got another service in him today or not. He's done blessed us once. I don't know if he can pour out again this evening. That if you've got a scarcity, oh, you know what? He's already poured his spirit out on that individual. I, I must have missed my opportunity. God must not be able to come back and bless me. That That's a scarcity mindset. But that's not the mindset that the bride of Christ has. The bride of Christ recognizes that God's favor is to you and I. That God wants to pour his blessings out. He's up in heaven. He's waiting on you and I just to get ourselves in the right position that he can just pour his blessings out that we would recognize what he is doing. That we're living in the days of famine. But not just any famine. You know, we, here in Elijah... I'm going to try to get to my text, and I, even as I was sitting back here in the office, I was like, I may have bit off a little more, and I can get in in one service. Well, we'll just we'll see how we get through tonight. Oh, uh, well, that's gone. Okay, but but to recognize that Elijah, that I, I want to look at this day of rain through through this story of Elijah, that that here Elijah was a vindicated prophet of God, that he had the word of God for his day. And he came with that message. Not even dew is going to fall from heaven until I call for it. Because of the way you're living. Now, if Ahab would have had the right revelation of God, all he would have had to done is repent. Say, so, oh, you're right. Let, let me get down on my knees. And it's not just me, it's the entire nation of Israel. Let, let's call a nationwide fast. Let's call a nationwide day of sackcloth and ashes. Let's turn our heart to, let's turn our heart to God. Jonah went to the Ninevites and the, the Ninevites were able to do it. And their judgment was delayed by, I think, a hundred years, if I remember correctly. Because they got on their knees and repented. That, that when the Word of God came and, and corrected them, they didn't say, how dare you? They didn't say, but I want to live my life. You must have the wrong interpretation. They didn't try to say, it's the wrong, wrong idea or the wrong, the wrong theology. They just said, we didn't even know there was such a God. Lord, forgive us. And the mercy of God was extended down to him, in spite of Jonah, I should say. And here Elijah, that Elijah, he wants them to live for God. And, and, but, but God has something else in store for them. You see, God sent this famine, but it wasn't for the destruction of Israel. The famine wasn't for their destruction. Their famine was to get them back in the right condition. The entire point of the famine was to bring Israel back to God. And you see, sometimes we go through trials and we go through hardship. Or we feel like God's judgment is poured out on us. But recognize this evening that God's favor is to you. That no matter what you're going through, God will turn it into a blessing in your life if you'll just let Him. If you'll just give it over to Him and say, Lord, Your Word is the truth. Lord, Your Word is what's that's more right than any idea I have. Lord, let Your Word reign supreme in my life. And if Your Word tells me I'm wrong, then Lord, I'm wrong. Let the Word be true and let my being be wrong. But, but Lord, whatever You do, 
Take this from me. Let, let me come into alignment with your word. Let, when you can approach things the right way, God will take whatever the greatest hardship you're going through, he will take that hardship and he will turn it into a blessing and a strength in your life. But you've got to be willing to let that thing go. You've got to be willing to turn that over to God and let God reign supreme in your life. That God sent this famine to Israel to get them back to where they would know God for themselves. That, but Ahab couldn't receive that. He couldn't receive that. That, that you know, and, and Elijah and his message was ultimately rejected. So they go three years. Famine. No rain. You know, we're living in the days of a famine. But it's not a famine for the word. It's not even a famine for the rain. But, but Amos tells us the famine is for the hearing of the words of the Lord. It's not that the words of the Lord aren't here. But people aren't able to recognize them. People aren't able to hear them. They hear somebody get up and they preach. Oh, that, that brother's just against me. That's exactly the Ahab spirit. Oh, that prophet Micaiah, yeah, we've got him, but he's just always against me. He's always preaching on me. He's always preaching on what I do. He had the, that attitude with Elijah. Man, that Elijah, he's just against me. He, he's never for me. He's just against me. Never once looking at what the Word of God says. That attitude is from the pits of hell. And it's got no business amongst us. We've got to start recognizing God's love and favor is to us. It doesn't matter what the Word of God says. His love and favor is to us. That if His love, if His Word brings correction, it's for your benefit. That, that Jesus, when He spoke to the Syrophoenician woman, He called her a dog. She could have walked away. He's just against me. I thought there was something special about his ministry, but uh, clearly it's not for me. He doesn't like me. He never says anything good about me. That wasn't the attitude she took. Rather, she goes, yea, Lord. Yea, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. That, that, you know, when, when God comes or, or, or if something comes and it, it steps on your toes a little bit or it pricks your heart a little bit, recognize that's more than just a man doing that. that that's more than just a man speaking. That, that's when you got to turn your heart to God and say, Yeah, Lord, I, maybe I'm wrong, Lord. There's no maybe about it. I'm wrong, Lord. But, Lord, I'm going to need you to take this from me. Lord, I don't want to be wrong anymore. Lord, I want to move on with you. Lord, help me to surrender. Help me to, to lay my life down before you that you can just have your will and way with me. Lord, don't let me fall into this famine. I think of the, the children of Israel as they're following, as Moses is leading them through the wilderness. It looked like a dusty and dry land. It looked like they're, that what they had need of wasn't anywhere near. They get thirsty, and God tells Moses, there's water in that rock over there. First time, Moses has to go and strike the rock. The second time, Moses is commanded to speak to the rock. Both times, the water comes gushing forth from that rock. You know, you and I, we read that, we read the Old Testament, it's like, wow, okay, that's good. But man, that was two instances. They spent 40 years wandering through the wilderness. But you see, if you keep reading your Bible, the Apostle Paul says that rock followed them. You say, how does that happen? I don't really know. But the Apostle Paul said it followed them, and that rock was Christ. You see, they're walking through a dry and barren land. They're, they're walking. It, no doubt it's dusty. No, no doubt it doesn't look like what they have need of. But every morning they got up, there's manna on, 
on the ground that they can gather up. That, that well, you know, of an evening the quail come through and they, they can gather the meat to eat it. But that rock followed them everywhere along the way. That any time they got thirsty, any time they, they got dry, they could just turn and speak to that rock and say, Lord, I need a drink from you this evening. Lord, I, I need some, some of that water of life to come through me this evening. I, I, I'm getting dry. I'm getting starchy. I, I'm getting prickly, Lord. Lord, uh, that, uh, that's the conditions of the age I'm living in. But that's not what you want me to be. That's, that's not the life that you have for me. Lord, I need more of that water in my life. Speak to the rock this evening. The rock is right here amongst us. The rock is right here amongst us. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. That yes, it's, it's a dark and dreary day, in the, in the, spiritually speaking, in the age we live in. It's a dark and dreary day. We see the, the world systems tightening their grip and tightening their grip. We, we see the, uh, the, the world financial systems uh, coming together and them being able to control the flow of money. Being able to lock it down. We, we see that the, uh, the, the technology industry and social media platforms starting to tighten down. I, uh, you probably saw where YouTube said they're going to censor anything that disagrees with the World Health Organization. That that, that is now their standard. That, that they've been looking for, for a body of men that they could turn and put their trust in. That to a body of men that they could turn and put their faith in. And say whatever they say is what's right. And, and if any information comes out that disagrees with what they say, we're going to censor it. We'll take the video down. And it's already happening. It doesn't matter if... Uh, I, I know of one example. They were just reading peer-reviewed studies. Of medical studies. These are peer-reviewed, published in a medical journal. But it disagreed with the stance of the World Health Organization, so YouTube took the video down. This is the age we're living in. That we know there's a great religious war going on. This idea of, well, what's allowed in freedom of religion? And what, when is freedom of living, religion really just bigotry? They're just looking for a body of men that they can put their faith in and say whatever this organization says, that's what we're going to consider true. And if you say something that's different than their, what they say, we're going to cut off your voice and you're not going to be able to, to preach to the world. Your, your videos and your streams and, and your voice won't be able to get out to the world. We're going to choke that off because it disagrees with... We know this is coming. A prophet of God, before there was social media, God sent us a prophet saying that they're going to turn back to that Catholic church, that, that World Council of Churches is going to join in together and whatever they agree with, that's the only thing that you're going to be allowed to say. And if you disagree with them, you're not going to be allowed to buy, you're not going to be allowed to sell. We, we see it coming to fruition. Right amongst us. We know what day we're living in. But in the same day that that's going on, God is moving. God is moving. And we see here with Elijah that, that you know, uh, uh, Elijah, that, that God tells them, all right, Elijah, now's the time. Now's the time. You go show yourself before Ahab. Today's the day of rain. That in the day of the showdown... Brother Branham often referred to Mount Carmel as a showdown. That it, it was a showdown between Baal, Baal, I don't know how you say his name, the false god. It was a showdown between the false god and the true god. That, that there was, they met on Mount Carmel and, and Elijah said, You all, you go, you build your altar, you take your bullock, you offer a sacrifice, and the god that answers by fire, we're going to let that god be God. That, that, you know, and there was 450 false prophets. 450 prophets of Baal versus one true prophet of God. Right. You see, God's never been in the numbers. Right. I know it's easy to look around, well, but we're just a little bitty church. 
Oh, you know what? That you go over to Bluffton or Lima or, or Johnson City. Man, they've got much bigger churches there. God can really move when you get there. God's never been about the numbers. He's been about the individuals that will yield themselves completely to His Word. That when God can just get a hold of one man, mountains will be moved. That demons will be cast out. Sicknesses will be healed. Just one man, that's all it takes this evening. Just one individual that will yield themselves to God and nothing will stop the God of fire from answering in that individual's life. That... That Elijah, that it was a showdown that took place. But in the day of the showdown, that's when God said, in the day of the showdown, that's when it's time for the famine to end. That in the day of the showdown, there's coming a rain. That he tells them at the beginning of 18, that today is the day. You show yourself to Ahab because I'm sending a rain. Today is the day. That, that you know that they have that showdown. And, and, and you know the prophets of Baal, they, they offer their sacrifice. And they're jumping and they're shouting and they're singing. And they got the music going. And Man, they're having just a wonderful worship service. A lot of energy, a lot of emotion, a lot of fanaticism, but no move of the Spirit. No move of the Spirit. What are we looking for tonight? Are we just looking for emotion? Are we just looking for the dancing and shouting? And I believe in emotion, dancing, and shouting. Every bit of it. But I want to make sure it's about the right thing. Emotion, jumping, and shouting on its own, if you don't have the Word, that's just, that's just a deceiving spirit. It's just a deceiving spirit. That, that they had all of that, but there was no fire. There was nothing that could consume the sacrifice that they were. Without a sacrifice, there is no true worship. You can sing, you can jump, you can shout, but without the word sacrifice, there is no true worship in your life. That, that you can do a lot of good things, but without the word sacrifice burning in your heart, there is no worship that you can give to God. It's the word first, and the worship takes place thereafter. That my, Elijah, he starts mocking them. He starts making fun of them. Right. Oh, <clears throat> uh, maybe you're not loud enough. Maybe your God's on vacation. Maybe He can't hear you. You know, I think sometimes the devil mocks us. And we don't even recognize it for what it is. Because if we're not careful, we get caught up just like those false prophets do. Lord, I need you to move. Lord, I need you to move. Maybe he can't hear you. Maybe you, need to, maybe you need to hold your hands a different direction. Maybe you need to put a little more money in the offering. Maybe you need to go volunteer in the soup kitchen. Maybe all, those all, they're good things, but they're not going to get God to hear you anymore. You don't earn God's favor. The grace of God is unmerited favor, meaning you don't do anything to earn it. We're not going to earn our way into heaven this evening. The bride of Christ does not earn her way into heaven. That it's the unmerited favor of God. That God chose you before the foundation of the world. And because He chose you back then, the blessings of God are open to you here this evening. That, that that's why we love the uh, love predestination, because you recognize that there's forces so much greater than you are. That, that not only can you not earn your way into heaven, neither can you mess up so bad that you can keep yourself out of heaven. That the, the blessings of God are open tonight. The heavens have been opened up and God's just waiting to pour His rain down in our life. Because He chose you for this day and this hour and this purpose to manifest this word. This is not our doing this evening. This is God's doing. And it's beautiful. That, that Elijah, he starts making fun of them. And they finally, Elijah, all right. It's my turn. They build the altar. They go back, the 12 stones, getting back to the word, getting back to the right foundation. 
They put the wood, they put the sacrifice, but Elijah's, no. God's going to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt. This isn't just a trick. This isn't just some mental telepathy. This isn't some kind of illusion. This isn't some kind of uh, wizardry or anything like this. This is going to be a supernatural event that takes place right here. That is going to be beyond a shadow of a doubt. A change takes place. He goes, get, get the barrels of water and dump it on, on everything. It, man, it, it soaks everything through. It fills up the ditch all around it. There is no way this should have caught fire by natural means. But there was more than just nature at work. There's more than just nature at work here this evening. That there's supernatural forces battling out right here this evening. Supernatural forces battling things out. But what does Elijah do? He just prays. He just prays a simple prayer. Lord, I've done everything you showed me. That's a powerful prayer. Lord, I've done everything you showed me. You know, a lot of times we, we can pray, Lord, I, I've done this part that you've showed me. Or, Lord, I, I, I've done this part over here that you've showed me. But what about the full word? What about the entirety of the Bible? You, you know, I, 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 was, uh, uh, I was listening to Brother Branham. He was talking about fanaticism and being, being fanatical and whatnot and just how a lot of people are getting caught up in that. And I was listening. I was like, yeah, I, I think I know what. Well, does, does that word mean what I think it means? I, I don't, just the way God has, has geared me, I'm always questioning, do I know what I really think I know or am I just imagining things? I've, you know, sometimes you don't really know what a word is, but you kind of infer the meaning from the context of the sentence. And if that's the only definition you have, you could very much have the wrong definition. And so, man, I'm like, well, let me look it up. So I look it up. Fanaticism. You know what it said? It said the state. Of being fanatical. Don't you hate the dictionary sometimes? But uh, you look up fanatical. It's talking about having a single-minded zeal. You go back far enough in time, it actually takes on the context of being possessed by a spirit, often in religious affairs, that you just get so single-focused on one thing, one ideal, one doctrine, that you just get focused on that one thing, and you get fanatical about it, that you miss everything else. That you get so focused on one thing, that you ignore the entirety of everything else going on around you. Now, if we're talking about being fanatical about the Word of God, as long as we're talking about the entire Word of God, I'm right there with you. We need more fanaticism about the entire Word of God. The zeal, the passion, the enthusiasm about the entire Word of God. But too often what happens? We don't get the entire Word of God. We get, oh, forgiveness of sins. Oh, you're justified by faith. God, God forgave you. God's forgiven you. And you go right out and live any old kind of life that you want to live. You, 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 you live in the world and partake of the worldly things just like non-Christians do. Well, there's got to be something missing. If there's no change in the life that you live, you can be as fanatical as you want about forgiveness of sins, but there's something missing. Likewise, you can go and, well, you've got to live a sanctified life. You've got to live a clean, pure, holy life. And you can get so fanatical about that that it becomes about your works and what you do. And, and, and you know, if you live right today, you're good to go. If you mess up tomorrow, you're lost. What is it? It's fanaticism on one thing or the other. But God has sent a message in this last day to get us back to the full Word of God that we can have the balance in the Scriptures. That, that's why I want to get more fanatical about this end time message because it is the revelation of the entirety of the Bible. That it's the full Word of God becoming manifest. That's worth getting excited about. That's worth having some zeal and passion about. But I want the full Word of God. 
Even in message ranks, you got people going off this way and, and going off that way. Lord, have mercy. I want the full Word of God. Because without the fullness, you never come to know the person of the Holy Ghost for yourself. You might know about some aspect. You might know about a different doctrine or a different... But the full Word of God brings you into a re relationship. A personal relationship. He's a person. He's a being that that you can know, that you can fellowship with, that you can commune with, and who will talk back with you. He will lead you. He will guide you. This is not just good ideas. This is not just a, a moral goodness to have in our life. It's so much more than that. Let's make sure we go on to the fullness of the Word of God. That Elijah, Lord, I've done all that you've showed me to do. The pillar of fire comes down from heaven. Consumes the sacrifice. Consumes the wood. Consumes everything. And all of Israel that's there on Mount, Mount Carmel, they're the Lord, he's God. Because Elijah, today's the day you make up your mind. You can't be double-minded about this anymore. You can't claim to serve Jehovah and then go and serve Baal at the same time. You can't serve both. You, you can't serve God and go off and serve the world. You can't serve God and go off and serve your flesh. You can't do both at the same time. Today's the day that you've got to make a decision. Today there's a showdown that's taking place. That you're going to choose one side or you're going to be counted with the other side. That Satan's the only one that tells you you can stand right in the middle or, or sit on the fence. There is no sitting on the fence. You either go with God or you're going to be taken with the devil. That that's the only two options. You, you say, but I don't like those options. What kind of world are you living in? Life is full of options we don't like. Life is full of decisions we may not want to make. If I go with God... That, I'm going to have to give up some things. I want to be near God. I want to be around church. Ah, I like coming around that atmosphere, but I don't want to get too close. Because I've seen what happens to people that get too close. There's a change that takes place. I don't want to get caught up in that change. If I get caught up in that change, I'm going to fall out of fellowship with my school buddies. I'm going to fall out of fellowship with the people I work with. Because you get too close. There's a change that takes place. But I don't want to be caught up with the world. That transgender, homosexuality, it doesn't even make sense in, in any sort of logic. Ever, I mean, not everybody. Sadly, not everybody knows that that's crazy. But there's a lot of people in the world today that knows it just does not make any sense whatsoever. But that doesn't mean they want to go with God. They want to pretend like, oh, but I can make my own religion. Oh, I, you know what? I don't have to go as crazy as they go. But I don't have to go all the way over here either. I'm just going to walk right here in the middle. That's another lying devil. You see, in the day of the showdown, when the showdown's taking place, it's one side or the other. There is no making up a third side. There is no, you're going to pick God's side or you're going to be counted with the devil. And you know what Elijah did? When they said, the Lord, He is God, Him we're going to serve, Elijah said, if you're going to serve the Lord, you've got to put to death every false prophet, every false idea, every false doctrine, everything that's raised itself up against the truth of God's Word. You've got to take it down to the river and you've got to slay it. Why did it have to be down by the river? It said by the book of, brook of Kidron. The washing of the water by the Word. That's, that's where the death has to take place. When you let the Word of God reign supreme and that Trinity doctrine raises itself up against it, no, that's not going to be allowed around the truth because God's Word slays that thing. So let's take that doctrine down to the washing of the water of the Word and slay that false idea. The idea of Calvinism, it doesn't matter how you live, that if you've got it made, you... you you can just live any old way you want. Let's 
let's take that and slay that false idea. The idea that you're unworthy and you can't do it, let's take it down to the water of the Word and slay that demon. The idea that you're too weak to, for God to move through, that God doesn't love you, take that down and slay that false idea. That today is the day you've got to choose a side. Today is the day of the showdown. There's a showdown taking It's already taken place in the church realms or in the spiritual realms. That the showdown took place during Brother Branham's ministry. And the denominations chose their side. And they said, we don't want that fire. Some emotion, that's all right. Prophecy, that's all right. Singing, jumping, shouting, dancing, that's all right. But don't, don't go against the women cutting their hair. Don't go against the television and the movies. Don't go against men wearing shorts. Don't go against those that, oh no, uh, oh, don't, don't go off into those doctrines. That, that's contrary to what we've been teaching for hundreds of years. And, and we can't go and tell everybody we've been wrong all this time. They weren't willing to put to death the false doctrines that had raised up amongst them. And they're going to be caught up in the judgment with all the other false gods. But if you want to serve the true God, you've got in your own life, you see this end time message put to death every false doctrine that would, has raised itself down through the history of man. Every false idea, every false doctrine, everything that would keep Keep God's chosen people from, from manifesting the fullness of the Word of God. Anything that Satan had erected that was against you and I, this end time message took it to the Word and slew those false ideas that the fullness of the Word of God could come down and live amongst us again. It takes the fullness of the Word. It takes slaying those wrong ideas. But we've got to do the same thing in our own individual life. That we've got to receive the fullness of the word ourselves. So when our bodies tell us you can't, we've got to raise up and say, but God's word, God's word says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not that I can't, I can by the grace of God. That when, when the Satan comes and tells you, you ain't worthy to lay your hands on him. You raise up and say, not only am I, but I've been commissioned by Jesus himself to lay my hands. I've been commissioned to cast out demons. I, I am heir to everything that Jesus Christ is heir to. Every spiritual manifestation belongs to me. When Satan says you can't get happy enough to dance, take him back to the Word and says that's a spiritual blessing that belongs to God's chosen people. When Satan says you can't speak in tongues, take him back to the Word. The Word, put the Word first in your life and slay everything that comes contrary to that. You see, all of this had to take place for the end of the famine to come in the land. God had always purposed that there was going to be an end to the famine. I know we go through dark times. I know we go through hard times. And some of you have been through much worse things than I have. I, I make no bones about that. But God has always purposed that there would be an end to your hardship. That there would be an end to your trial. Whatever you're facing tonight, there is an expected end to that thing. And to recognize that we're living in the day that is the end of all things. That, that you know there's a showdown taking place. And when you let that showdown take place in your life, and you cast down every false idea that there's the sound of abundance of rain. That you recognize there's now nothing that God's prophet has already spoken. There's going to be rain. That there is rain. That, that God's prophet, he, he taught us that Joel there, the former rain moderately. And then the former and the latter rain together in the first month. You can look and you can say, well... You know, that latter rain, that was the upper room experience. 
If you're looking at the Jewish church, I'll go with you on that. You see, there was another showdown that took place in Jesus' day. Brother Branham called it the Mount Transfiguration Showdown. That there was a showdown that took place. And there was the sound of the abundance of rain after that showdown that anybody that recognized and chose God's way on that Mount Transfiguration Showdown that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is God Himself in His fullness in a human body. That, that when you can recognize that, there's a, there was a rain that poured out for those. It, it was the latter rain. It was the Holy Spirit being poured out in their lives. And, and it made them sound like drunk men. It made them act like drunk men. They're staggering around. They're falling down. They're being slain in the Spirit. They're seeing into the other realm. Somebody saw the licks of fire over each one of them. They heard the sound of the rushing wind. The latter rain. I'll go with you for the Jewish church. But when you're looking at the Gentile church, God's prophet didn't say that was the latter rain. God's prophet actually said that that first church, that was the former rain. That if you're looking at what Joel wrote, that was the former rain moderately. That book of Acts church, the one we aspire to get back to, that one that we, man, if we could just get back to those days. Oh, if we, that was the former rain moderately. God's got something better in store for us here this evening. That, that there's another showdown taking place right here amongst us this evening. Brother Branham called it the Mount Zion showdown. That it's the Mount Zion showdown. That, that you and I were recognizing we're not born for this world. We're not part of this world. But we're going up to Mount Zion. There's a rapture getting ready to take place. And that showdown starts taking place in our lives. And we slay every false idea that there's a latter rain. Where the former and the latter rain Come poured out together. That, that former rain was a teaching rain, Brother Branham taught us. That this end time message came with the fullness of the Word of God being restored. Teaching us the right way to think. Teaching us the right way to live. But God didn't just leave it with a teaching. This is more than just a teaching or a lifestyle that you can learn. But there is a latter rain that comes with this. That comes with power and authority in your life. That when you yield yourself to, to, the, to the reign of God in this last day. That there's power with it. That... It was after the showdown or at the time of the showdown that the rain starts being poured out. That, that they slay all the false ideas and, and, and Elijah just turns to Ahab. Go ahead and feast and drink. The end of the famine is over. Still look like brassy skies. I hear this sound of the abundance of rain. Not a cloud in the sky. We find Elijah goes up to the top of the mountain. He gets down and he prays. Tells the servant, go see. Go, go on, look, tell me what you see. I don't see anything. Elijah prays again. He goes, see, Elijah was looking at what the word of God had already said. When he said, I hear the abundance of the sound of rain, he was listening to the word of God. He wasn't looking with what his natural eyes could see. He wasn't listening with what his natural ears could see. He was listening to what the Word of God had said. And the Word of God had already told him that in the day of the showdown, that's the day of rain. That's the day of the end of all the famine, the end of all the hardship. That there's going to come a blessing on the land in that day of the showdown. So Elijah, I hear it. I know it's coming. It's, it's more real than the dryness of the dirt all around me. Go look. He prays again. Go look again seven times, Elijah, pray, Elijah prayed. And the last time the servant comes back, well, there, I think it's a cloud. Uh, it's, it's pretty small. It's pretty far out there. I, I, I don't even know if it's a rain cloud. I think it's a cloud. 
But you see, that was the gathering of moisture up in the air. That was the gathering of the moisture up in there. It was the beginning. Elijah, he didn't need anything else. Well, I, 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 think, it's, I think it's a cloud. Elijah gets, he starts running down the mountain. He was so convinced that the blessing was upon him that he takes off running. You see, before, before he had the first evidence of any rain whatsoever in his life, he could take off running, he could start rejoicing, he could start testifying about it because he knew the Word of God was true, more true than anything else in this world, that he took off running. He, he takes off running so fast he ends up passing Ahab. And lo and behold, before he can even get home, that the heavens have just opened up and the rain's just gushing out. What was it? It was the latter rain being loosed upon God's chosen people because they chose God. That the upper room, the latter rain to the apostles, heavens opened up, loosed because they obeyed the word of the Lord. You see, I, I don't know how many, how many started to gather with them. How many people were there on day one? We know there's about 120 on day 10. But how many were there on day one and decided, I don't know if there's anything to this. You know what? Doesn't make any sense for us to all just hide up here. I'm going to go out on my own. Maybe there's a better church down the road. How many on day two said, this doesn't make any sense. If God was going to do something for us, he'd have done it already. You see, God's got an appointed time for everything. He's got an appointed time for everything. And most of the time, He's waiting on us to get in the right condition. You know, God told Abraham that his children would sojourn for 400 years down in a strange land and become slaves. But after 400 years, He'd bring them out. If you do the math, it was actually, I think, 430 years, if I remember correctly. You know what God's prophet said that difference was due to? He goes, God had an appointed time. And he goes, the children of Israel had to get to that place where they were crying out for the deliverer. But that extra 30 years was that the children of Israel could get in the right condition, get in the right position, get the right attitude to God so that they could receive what God had for them. That... So often, we want a blessing from God. And we're going, man, I just, I don't know when the right time is. Well, the right time is now. But sometimes there's a delay to the blessings in our life because we've got the wrong attitude. That in the day of the showdown, that's the day that the rain gets poured out. The blessings are to you and I here this evening. But we've got to make sure we're in the right condition, that we have the right attitude. As long as we're thinking, well, man, that rapture, that's for a different day. Or, you know what, I, I'm believing for my son, or I'm believing for my daughter, but it's not for today. Maybe next week. Maybe next month. Maybe the next trial that comes in their life. Maybe the next time they trip and fall. That, that you know, we, we have burdens for fathers or neighbors or, or, or mothers or aunts, uncles. That, that, and and we, get, we get numb to them. Right. Well, if they ain't heard it yet, well, yeah, you can come on to church. But if you've ignored it all the times before, you're going to ignore it this time too. We go to meet with them and, well, the Lord can't use me to say anything. I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and I've tried. And man, they just shoot down everything I have to say. Well, your attitude isn't the right attitude. When you've got the right kind of faith, God's going to move today. I thought it was yesterday, but since he didn't do it yesterday, it's today. That should be where, our, that it should be so real to us. You say, but their heart seems just as hard, or their heart seems like it's harder today than... Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. My God's getting ready to open up heaven and pour His Spirit out on them. 
I'd like to see them resist the move of the Holy Spirit in their life. There ain't enough demons in hell that can keep the Spirit of God moving when God decides to do something. And I'm believing for it. And I know God hears my prayer. You see, when you've got the right kind of faith, it's not about, well, probably not today. Well, I just don't know if God can use anybody in our church. Maybe, maybe if another brother comes from another church. And I know God uses this sometimes, but I'm talking about our attitude. If another brother comes from another church, by all means, drag him to church and let's, let's have church. And let's let God be God. But so often, we miss God's move right in our very midst. Because, well, it's not the right conditions. What's not? Open up your Bible and tell me what's not the right conditions. Let's look at the scriptures that tell us what day and hour that we're living in. How God reacts to His chosen people in the end time hour. Let, let, let's, let's take a look at the scriptures. That, that Daniel tells us those that know their God, they shall do exploits. Jesus said, they that, that, that believe my word, these signs shall follow them. That, that the scriptures tell us time and time and time and time again that the supernatural is going to live out through God's chosen people. And if there's something saying, well, maybe not today for the supernatural, it's time we take that to God's word and kill that thing. This is the day that God is pouring out the Spirit. This doesn't mean everybody's going to recognize it. Just like the rock that followed the children of Israel in the wilderness, they didn't all recognize it. Just like the, the famine that Amos prophesies for this land, it's the famine for the hearing of the word. It's not that the Word isn't here. The, the Word's here and it's full. The Word has always been here. It's been man's idea that kept us from recognizing it. It's, be, it's been our ideas that we elevated above what God's Bible says. That's the only thing that's kept us from the living reality of the Word. How am I doing on time? Dad, I've, I've got a... Slideshow, if you could bring it up. There's a, there's a quote I want to play, and then, then we can close. I know it's a little bit longer tonight. But, but to recognize this is the day of the rain. That the former and latter rain, that was the former rain moderately in the book of Acts Church. The church today, it's the same life, it's the same spirit, but I do expect a greater measure. There should be more of it. Because if that was, I, I'm saying, Lord, I, I don't want the spirit in moderation. I want to be full to overflowing. I, I, I don't want to be the one that limits the power of God in my life. Yet, most of the time, that's exactly what it is. That God is so much greater and so much bigger than what we think, we actually put limits on what God can do in our life. Because He's right there and we don't recognize Him. Because we're not looking for Him. Because we're not expecting Him to move. He's like, oh, I, I could touch you right now. But we're like, meh, pain's pretty strong. Pretty sure the day's lost. Try again tomorrow. His word says we're already healed. That, that you know that, that his word says you can have faith for both yourself and your household. I don't know about you, but man, the devil spends a lot of time and energy. Just man, I I get so happy sometimes. Whew. I, I I really think I do have faith for myself. Man, that was close. And like I, that was a good day, and I'm ready to go home. But God's going, well, of course you've got faith for yourself. I put that faith in you. But it's not just for you. It's for your household. It's for others too. Don't quit and give up just because you see one good thing. Elijah wasn't satisfied with just one drop of rain. He wanted the land to be flooded. 
we should be looking for the same thing. We don't want just enough water of life to live or just enough to, to not die, but we should we should want to be full to overflowing that it, it splashes out of us and onto other people. Amen. Amen. This is a, in, I think this was 1962, God gave Brother Branham a, told Brother Branham to take up his pen and write. He writes a letter to the church. And I just felt to play it. Now, what I'm going to play for you, he, he reads it in, in the spoken words, the original seed. But it gets reprinted. He grammarizes it and, and puts it in the Pergamian Church Age, in the Church Ages book. That's actually the one I'm going to play for you here this evening. I think I did spoken word, the original seed, last time. I know I've done it before. I'll probably do it again. There's a, so much packed into this, but I, I just felt to, to play this. Let's hope it actually plays. I did struggle a little bit with. Go ahead and click that request access button. I really. Okay. Well, I may not be playing it for you. I apologize. I'm All right, try going back and let's try that again or close that tab. Can you uh, take the slide down? Let's hit escape. All right, let, let's, yeah, open it back up. Let's just do the slideshow again. This is about 15 minutes long. Here is what I am trying to say to you. The law of reproduction is that each species brings forth after its own kind, even according to Genesis 1:11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. Whatever life was in the seed came forth into a plant and thence into fruit. The very same law applies to the church today. Whatever seed started the church will come forth and be like the original seed no, because it uh, is the, the same the seed. The dial up top for the computer. In these last days, the true bride church, Christ's seed, will come to the headstone and she will be the super church, a super race as she nears him. They and the bride will be so much like him that they will even be in his very image. This is in order to be united with him. They will be one. They will be the very manifestation of the word of the living God. Denominations cannot produce this wrong seed. They will produce their creeds and their dogmas mixed with the word. This mongrelizing brings forth a hybrid product. The first son, Adam, was the spoken seed word of God. He was given a bride to reproduce himself. That is why the bride was given to him to reproduce himself, to produce another son of God. But she fell. She fell by hybridization. She caused him to die. The second son, Jesus, also a spoken seed word of God, was given a bride like as was Adam. But before he could marry her, she also had fallen. She, like Adam's wife, was put to the test whether she would believe the word of God and live or doubt the word and die. She doubted. She left the word. She died. From a little group of the true seed of the word, God will present Christ with a beloved bride. She is a virgin of his word. She is a virgin because she knows no man-made creeds or dogmas. By and through the members of the bride will be fulfilled all that was promised of God to be made manifest in the virgin. The word of promise came to the Virgin Mary, but that word of promise was he himself to be made manifest. God was made manifest. He himself acted at that time and fulfilled his own word of promise in the Virgin. It was an angel that had brought her the message. 
but the angel's message was the word of God. Isaiah 9, 6. He fulfilled at that time all that was written of him because she accepted his word to her. The members of the virgin bride will love him, and they will have his potentials, for he is their head, and all power belongs to him. They are subject to him as the members of our bodies are subject to our heads. Notice the harmony of the Father and the Son. Jesus never did anything until it was first showed him by the Father. John 5, 19. This harmony is now to exist between the groom and his bride. He shows her his word of life. She receives it. She never doubts it. Therefore, nothing can harm her, not even death. For if the seed be planted, the water will raise it up again. Here is the secret of this. The word is in the bride, as it was in Mary. The bride has the mind of Christ, for she knows what he wants done with the word. She performs the command of the word in his name, for she has, thus saith the Lord. Then the word is quickened by the Spirit, and it comes to pass. Like a seed that is planted and watered, it comes to full harvest, serving its purpose. Those in the bride do only his will. No one can make them do otherwise. They have thus saith the Lord, or they keep still. They know that it has to be God in them doing the works, fulfilling his own word. He did not complete all his work while in his earthly ministry, so now he works in and through the bride. Amen. She knows that, for it was not yet time for him to do certain things that he must now do. But he will now fulfill through the bride that work which he left for this specific time. Now let us stand like Joshua and Caleb. Our promised land is coming in sight even as theirs did. Now Joshua means Jehovah's Savior, and he represents the end time leader that will come to the church even as Paul came as the original leader. Caleb represents those that stayed true with Joshua. Remember, God had started Israel as a virgin with his word, but they wanted something different. So did the last day church. Notice how God did not move Israel or let her go into the promised land until it was his own appointed time. Now the people might have put pressure on Joshua, their leader, and said, the land is ours, let's go and take it. Joshua, you are all through, you must have lost your commission. You don't have the power you used to have. You used to hear from God and know the will of God and act quickly. Something is wrong with you. But Joshua was a God-sent prophet and he knew the promises of God, so he waited for them. He waited for a clear-cut decision from God, and when the time came to move, God placed the full leadership in Joshua's hands, because he had stayed with the word. God could trust Joshua, but not the others. So it will repeat in this end day. The same problem, the same pressures. Take the example we see in Moses. This mighty anointed prophet of God had a peculiar birth, being born at the right time for the deliverance of Abraham's seed from Egypt. He never stayed in Egypt to argue scripture with them, nor fuss at the priests. He went to the wilderness until the people were ready to receive him. God called Moses to the wilderness. The waiting was not on Moses' part, but because of the people who were not ready to receive him. Moses thought the people would understand, but they did not. Then there is Elijah, to whom the word of the Lord came. When he got through preaching the truth and that group back there, that is the forerunner of the American Jezebel group, would not receive the word, God called him off the field and plagued that generation for rejecting the prophet and the message that God had given. God called him to the wilderness, and he would not come out even for the king. Those who tried to persuade him to do so died. But God spoke to his faithful prophet by vision. Out of hiding he came and brought back the word to Israel. Then came John the Baptist, Christ's faithful forerunner, the mighty prophet for his day. He did not go to his father's school, nor the school of the Pharisees. He went to no denomination, but out to the wilderness called there by God. There he stayed until the Lord sent him out with the message, crying, The Messiah is at hand. Now let us take a scriptural warning here. Was it not in the days of Moses, whom God had vindicated, that Korah rose up and withstood that mighty prophet? He disputed with Moses and claimed that he had as much from God to lead the people and that others shared in the divine revelation as well as did Moses. He denied the authority of Moses. Now the people back there, after they had heard the true word and were well acquainted with the fact that a true prophet was vindicated of God, 
I say those people fell for Korah and his gainsayings. Korah was not a scriptural prophet, but the people in great numbers with their leaders went for him. How like the evangelists today with their golden calf schemes like Korah's. They look good to the people as Korah looked good then. They have blood on their foreheads, oil on their hands, and balls of fire on the platform. They allow women preachers, let women cut their hair, wear slacks and shorts, and bypass the word of God for their own creeds and dogmas. That shows what kind of seed is in them. But not all the people turned on Moses and left the word of God. No, the elect stayed with him. The same is happening again today. Many are leaving the word, but some are staying with it. But remember the parable of the wheat and tares. The tares have to be bundled for burning. These apostate churches are getting bound closer and closer together, ready for the fires of God's judgment. But the wheat is going to be gathered to the master. Hey. Now I want you to be very careful here and see this. God has promised that at the end time, Malachi 4 is going to be fulfilled. It has to be, for it is the spirit-quickened word of God spoken by the prophet Malachi. Jesus referred to it. It is just before Christ comes the second time. By the time Jesus comes, all scripture must be fulfilled. The Gentile dispensation will be in its last church age when that messenger of Malachi comes. He will be right with the word. He will take the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. He will start at the serpent's seed and carry on to the messenger in the latter reign. But he will be rejected by the denomination. He has to be, for that is history repeating itself from the time of Ahab. Israel's history under Ahab is happening right here in America, where the prophet of Malachi appears. As Israel left Egypt to worship in freedom, pushed out the natives, raised up a nation with great leaders like David, etc., and then put an Ahab on the throne with a Jezebel behind him to direct, so have we done the very same in America. Our forefathers left for this land to worship and live in freedom. They pushed back the natives and took over the land. Mighty men like Washington and Lincoln were raised up, but after a while other men of such poor caliber succeeded these worthy men that soon an Ahab was set in the presidential chair with a Jezebel behind him to direct him. It is at such a time as this that the messenger of Malachi must come. Then in the latter reign will come a Mount Carmel showdown. Watch this carefully now to see it in the word. John was the forerunner of Malachi 3. He planted the former reign and was rejected by the organizations of his day. Jesus came and had a Mount Transfiguration showdown. The second forerunner of Christ will sow for the latter reign. Jesus will be the showdown between the denominations and creeds, for he will come to back up his word and take his bride in the rapture. The first showdown was Mount Carmel. The second was the Mount Transfiguration. And the third will be Mount Zion. The strange behavior of Moses, Elijah, and John withdrawing from the people into seclusion left many confused. They did not realize that it was because their messages had been rejected. But the seed had been sown, the planting was over. Judgment was next. They had served their purpose as a sign to the people, so judgment was next. I believe according to Revelation 13, 16, that the bride will have to stop preaching for the beast is demanding the mark in the hand or forehead if permission to preach be granted. Denominations will take the mark or be forced to quit preaching. Then the Lamb will come for his bride and judge the great harlot. Now remember that Moses was born for a certain work, but he could not do that work until he had received the gifts which would enable him to do the work. He had to go out in the desert and wait there. God had an appointed time. There was to be a certain Pharaoh on the throne, and the people had to be crying for the bread of life before God could send him back. This is true for our day. But what do we have in this our day? Multitudes are working signs until we have a generation of sign seekers that know little or nothing about the word or a true move of the spirit of God. If they see blood, oil, and fire, they are happy. It matters not what is in the word. They will support any sign, even unscriptural ones. But God has warned us about that. He said in Matthew 24 that in the last days the two spirits would be so close together that only the very elect could tell them apart, for they alone would not be deceived. How can you tell the spirits apart? Just give them the word test. 
If they don't speak that word, they are of the evil one. As the evil one deceived the first two brides, he will try to deceive the bride of this last day by trying to get her to hybridize herself through creeds or just plainly turning from the word to any sign that suits her. But God never placed signs ahead of the word. Signs follow the word as when Elijah told the woman to bake a cake for him first, according to the word of the Lord. When she did as the word said, the proper sign came. Come to the word first and then watch the miracle. The seed word is energized by the spirit. How can any messenger sent from God believe only a part of the word and deny some of it? The true prophet of God in this last day will proclaim the whole word. Denominations will hate him. His words may be as harsh as John the Baptist who called them vipers. But the predestinated will hear and be ready for the rapture. The royal seed of Abraham with like faith as Abraham's will hold to the word with him, for they are predestinated together. The last day messenger will appear in God's appointed time. It is the end time now as all know, for Israel is in the homeland. Any time now he will come according to Malachi. When we see him, he will be dedicated to the word. He will be indicated, pointed out in the word, Revelations 10, 7. And God will vindicate his ministry. He will preach the truth as did Elijah and be ready for the Mount Zion showdown. Many will misunderstand him because they have been taught scripture in a certain way which they consider truth. When he comes against that, they will not believe. Even some true ministers will misunderstand the messenger because so much has been called God's truth by deceivers. But this prophet will come, and as the forerunner to the first coming cried, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Even so will he no doubt cry out, Behold the Lamb of God coming in glory. He will do this, for even as John was the messenger of truth to the elect, so is this one the last messenger to the elect and word-born bride. Christ. Amen. There's a lot packed in there, amen. But I, I like how he brought out, this is the Mount Zion showdown. I'm not done with that slide deck, Dad. This is the Mount Zion showdown that, you know, when it came time for Elijah on the Mount Carmel showdown, that, no, I, we go. I didn't mean to go farther, that uh, at, when it came time for the Mount, Mount Zion showdown, or the Mount Carmel showdown, that Elijah, he called the pillar of fire, the pillar of fire came back down, it was returned amongst the people, but... Then Elijah turned to the people and said, now you have a part to play. Now you need to take these false prophets, and you've got to take them down to the river and slay them. That, that it was, uh, we have our part to play. That when you, you recognize that we're living in the days of the Mount Zion showdown, it's time for the rain. It, this is the days that the rain is being poured out on, on the bride again. That, that uh, this is the day. And in closing, I, I want to leave you with, with, with one more thing. That, that you know, Jesus, Jesus told us in the last day when it came time for that midnight cry and the shout of the bridegroom, it says that, that all the virgins, they awoke and... Um, all the, 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 the wise virgins, they took up their lamps. They had oil in it, so they trimmed their lamps, and they made sure that fire was burning clearly. They made sure it was burning clearly. That, that you know, that, that pillar of fire has to be sparked down on the inside of our heart. It has to be burning on, that, you know, the oil is a type of the Holy Ghost. That's got to be dwelling on the inside of our heart. And uh, the, the thing I want to leave you with is, have you ever seen what happens when you take water and you pour it on an oil fire? Something, that little fire, it doesn't matter how little that fire is, but if, if it's an oil-based fire, it doesn't take much water, but you mix a little bit of water in that oil-based fire and you, you get an explosion that takes place. We can go to that last side now, Dad. 
So this is kind of a science experiment that they're, they're they've got, they, they took a bottle of vegetable oil, poured it in a pot, and they set that on fire. And they've got just, it's just a glass full of water. It's not much, but they're going to empty that glass full of water into that fire. that when it doesn't matter if you think you're a big Christian or a little Christian, I know a lot of times we, we think we're the, the littlest of Christians, that, that we think, man, I, I just I don't know if I've got enough. But it just takes a little bit of spark down in your life. And if you let God rain down on you, that, you know, I, I know a lot of times we don't feel like we're much, but... When we let the rain of God come down in our life, that, that's the anointing of the water of God coming down from heaven. When that mixes with that oil fire that's down on the inside of our heart, there's explosions that take place. That, that great and mighty thing, it's not us that does it. It's, it's God burning on the inside of our heart with the Holy Spirit. And it's the anointing and rain coming from heaven down into our lives. That, that atmosphere, when, when we create that Holy Ghost atmosphere in the church, we should expect explosions of the Spirit. We, we should expect great and mighty things because this is the way God works. These are the laws that, that He has put on this earth that if we just take what we have it doesn't matter if we think we're super on fire for God or if we're just barely burning it doesn't matter just a little bit of flame and just a little bit of fire turns into great and wonderful things amen let's stand as the musicians come this is the day of rain that we're not looking for another day God is now, the anointing of God is now being poured out on his church. We've just got to recognize it in our lives. And when those false ideas and those false doctrines, when they try to rise up against us, we've got to take them to the water of the word and let the word of God slay those things. The word comes first, then the explosions come thereafter. Amen. Amen. Let's, uh, let's just sing that song. Uh, uh, I can't even think of what the I'm going in a rapture do you want to know where I'm going I don't there's a title somewhere I don't know what it is I think it's key of C maybe do you want to know where I'm going where I'm going Nobody asked you, you where I'm going, where I'm going this soon. I'm going up yonder, I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. I can take the pain, the heartaches they bring, the comfort in knowing I'll soon be gone. As God gives me grace, I'll run this race until I see my Savior face to face. I'm going up yonder, I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. I'm going in a rapture. I'm going in a rapture. 
I'm going in a rapture to be with my Lord. Amen. I'll see if I can learn that song a little bit better. I like that song, though. Amen. Amen. Uh, Let's just sing the windows of heaven are open. Amen. The windows of heaven are open. The bridegroom is calling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart. Everything right. I gave him my old filthy garment. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. And that's why I'm happy tonight. The windows of heaven are open. The bridegroom is calling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old filthy garments. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. And that's why I'm happy tonight. The windows of heaven are open. The bridegroom is calling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old filthy garments. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. And that's why I'm happy tonight. Amen. I believe the windows are open tonight. Amen. That, you know, if somebody here, if they want prayer or they're looking for something from God, don't let tonight pass you by. Amen. This is the day that God is raining out his blessings. Amen. That, that let's not leave here. If, if there's something you still need from God, let's make sure we find it here tonight. Amen. Amen. That if you want prayer, you can come forward this evening. Um, let's just sing, It's Not By Might, also key of C. Amen. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. This mountain shall be removed. This mountain shall be removed. This mountain shall be removed by my Spirit, saith the Lord. Well, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. 
It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. Well, this mountain shall be removed, this mountain shall be removed, this mountain shall be removed, by my Spirit, saith the It's beginning to rain Hear the voice of our Father He's saying that whosoever will Come drink of my water He promised to pour his out on his sons and his daughters. If you're thirsty and dry, look up to the sky. It's beginning to rain. It's beginning to rain. Hear the voice of our Father. He's saying, Whosoever will come drink of my water, he promised to pour his spirit out on his sons and his daughters. If you're thirsty and dry, look up to the sky. It's beginning to rain. It's beginning to rain. Hear the voice of our Father. He's saying, Who Whosoever will come drink of my water, he's promised to pour his spirit out on his sons and his daughters. If you're thirsty and dry, look up to the sky. It's beginning to rain. Let's give the Lord a hand clap tonight. Amen. Amen. Do you love him this evening? I believe he wants to do great things in our life. Amen. And I believe the rain is here to see it through. Amen. Amen. Brother Brad, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer this evening?
Amen. May the Lord bless you as you're dismissed this evening. Amen. Fully alive in your spirit. See. Fully alive in your spirit. Lord, make me fully alive. Fully aware of your presence, Lord. Totally, fully alive. Fully alive in your spirit, Lord, make me fully alive. Fully aware of your presence, Lord, totally, fully alive. Fully alive in your